Hello friends, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan, and Merry Christmas to those of you who are celebrating Christmas. And to those of you who don't celebrate Christmas, happy holidays, etc. I almost certainly won't do a video on Christmas Day tomorrow as I'll be with my family, but I wanted to take this opportunity to extend my warmest regards to you, viewer, listener, whatever. Returning viewer, hopefully subscriber, uh, today in Chelsea News, we are discussing quite a lot, actually. Uh, Jorginho expected to leave? Uh, Declan Rice and his future of Chelsea looking at him? Jao Felix loan option in January, Chelsea considering, with a option to buy at the end of a six-month loan. And also, Chelsea approach Neymar in Qatar. Of course, Messi's looking like he's going to extend with PSG, and there's been animosity with Neymar for a while. <clears throat> Thank you for liking the video. Um, takes a millisecond, and it's a way of supporting the channel. Uh, you're welcome to subscribe, as well as click join underneath the video to join the GOAT gang. You get a badge, emojis, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. It's pretty much it, but co uh, comment reply priority as well. Anyway, admin over. Let's get into it. Where to start indeed? Well, Fabrizio Romano on his YouTube channel is talking about how Gel Felix is open to leaving uh, Atletico Madrid in January. In a matter of days, this January window opens. Uh, understandably, he's probably bored of playing stodgy defensive football under Diego Simeone. And he is he's still young, bro. Isn't that 23? He's just been around forever. Remember, he costs like 120 million euros, but he'll be uh, available for a lot less than that. And I wouldn't say his stock has fallen, uh, to to be honest. Like, it's probably increased and he's yet to enter his prime still. It's just that classic stuff that we keep talking about of a very talented player, but how do you fit it in? Fit him in? How do you get the best out of him? How do you make it work? And yes, I was right previously to make the comparisons to Kai Havertz, the sort of positionally flexible, two-footed, creative attacking players with good but not devastating output. Still, it's a very, very high-profile and exciting name. Um, reading here on a uh, Cy Phillips's uh, news website, um, as well as the when well, I start at the top, Chelsea have been one of the English clubs linked to Atletico Madrid's uh, Jao Felix, and since they have a long-term injury of Bruyer to deal with, there have been some whispers that they could now turn to Felix in January. And well, this might actually make sense because a six-month loan will give you that security while um, Bruyer's out. And then Bria will return at the end of the season. And then if Jao Felix's loan was okay but not great, it ends, he goes back or he gets sold somewhere else and Bria returns. Or, alternatively, he does very, very well and you fit them all in. And we just sell other different attackers. As well as the above, new, de new details have been released on the type of deal that Atletico will be willing to accept for the Portuguese international. This could genuinely appeal to Chelsea more. So Duncan Castles of the Daily Record claims that Madrid, Atletico, are prepared to let Felix join an English Premier League club on loan. Uh, as long as financial fair play costs is covered by his new employers. The amortization cost of the forward seven year contract amounts to about 18 million pounds, sorry, euros per season. So that's wages and transfer fee chopped up. That's what amortization means. Um, so Atletico asking for a loan fee of half of that, plus uh, the player's salary to be paid in full, which is pretty fair. So what's the, so 9 million euros a uh, loan fee. Oh no, because that will be a six months, isn't it? Nine million years for six months, plus his wages. He's fallen out of favour a little bit with Simeone, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm not really sure. He, he's a massive name. He's a massive talent. Um, and a six-month loan could be appealing to Chelsea? Let me know what you guys think. Um, obviously, if this deal heats up, we will comment on it more. And, you know, make sure you turn the bell on when you subscribe to this channel so you can be the first to hear it. All right, so um, we'll talk about Neymar at the end because that's another blockbuster name. Um, very, very interesting indeed. It does interest me that because hearing Igbali talk on that press conference about, oh, they wanted to like build this team of young superstars and not the 30-year-old, you know, so-and-sos, and of course Neymar is 30 now. Very interesting to, to hear about that. So there's a great article on The Athletic by um, Roshan Thomas. 
uh, talking about what's going on with Declan Rice. Of course, they wanted 150 million, said uh, David Moyes, for um, the England midfielder. Now that 150 million, you could probably almost certainly assume has been halved, essentially. So I'm going to... I'm going to read a tiny bit, well, a little bit about this uh, from this article talking about Chelsea. So, of course, Chelsea uh, was, um, it, Declan Rice was at Chelsea and Chelsea released him. He went to West Ham to their academy to finish off his academy stuff. I think when he was 14. Got into the first team, has been very excellent. You know, first name on the team sheet for England and is a, is a very, very good central defensive midfielder who, by the way, is a big Chelsea fan. But relating to that, some of the misgivings over Rice at Chelsea was how he was not progressive with the ball. However, members of staff at the club felt other areas of his game have now compensated for that. Given the rate which he has improved, they feel they needed to consider him as an option. Yes, the last two years, his game has developed a lot, essentially. Chelsea are worried about losing Rice to rivals Manchester United or Manchester City. There are frustrations over Mohamed Salah and Kevin De Bruyne departures in 2016 and 2014, respectively, and the eagerness to rectify those mistakes. Yeah, Kevin De Bruyne will always hurt because that was still Mourinho's fault, but Salah... Salah wasn't good for Chelsea. And also, like... Salah needed that story arc. He needed to go to Italy and it was part of his development. It doesn't necessarily mean he was going to be great at Chelsea. I don't think he would have been. But De Bruyne would have been great at Chelsea. De Bruyne was just a good player. Um, anyway, I digress slightly. Man, Man United, they've got Casemiro. He's not a long-term option, though. City, they got Rodri. I don't know. And they've got Calvin Phillips. City do not need another CDM. He could well bowl up at Ten Hag's Manchester United, though. Chelsea's owners want a squad built with 20 of players 25 and under. Mm, yeah, young and hungry to win trophies. Rice, who turns 24 in January, would fit that mould. And yeah, it's, you know, the sweet spot really in it for especially central defensive midfielders. You know, the aforementioned Casemiro is still excellent in his phase. <laughs> Oh, and, you know, I could talk about... I know Modric isn't a conventional CDM, but, you know, Fernandinho went on for ages as well. Yeah, very much, very much um, fitting the bill for the team of tomorrow, as we like to call it. Chelsea's interest in Rice dates back to when Frank Lampard was manager. They explored the possibility of signing the midfielder in the summer window of 2020. Lampard, now manager of Everton, made concerted efforts to convince Rice to, <laughs> to bring his future to the Chelsea. However, there were concerns from the club's hierarchy about what it would look like to spend a fortune on a player that was let go for nothing. It believes Lampard's constant push for Rice aggravated Chelsea's board, so a deal never materialised. Interesting quote. We were fortunate to have him in England, said Lampard. West Ham are fortunate to have him. He's a leader, and it's clear that he's destined for great things. I've probably given it away with how I spoke about him, but I think it's common knowledge that I was a big fan of his. It didn't happen for various reasons, uh, but we brought in a lot of players that summer, but I'm a big fan of was am a big fan of him. So this is obviously... Um, Frank Lampard talking about nearly signing Declan Rice. Thomas Tuchel, Lampard's successor was also a big admirer of Rice. Quote, I rate him very highly. He seems like a very nice guy from what everybody tells me at the Chelsea Academy, and he proves this, his quality. That's the most important thing. It feels like he plays every single game. Uh, he's available. He is a captain. He plays with a lot of responsibility. He's a physical player. He's very strategic-minded, a key player for his team, and is strong at set pieces. This is not a surprise. Everybody sees this. He's a huge part of the success of West Ham. So... Thomas Tuchel loved him as well. Frank Lampard loved him. Thomas Tuchel loved him. And you would not be surprised if um, Graham Potter likes Declan Rice as well. Uh, this goes on to say the expectation of Georgi the expectation is Jorginho will leave at the end of the season when his contract expires. Both parties are still no closer to agreeing terms for a contract extension. Kante's contract also expires in the summer, but his future remains in the balance. Graham Potter, who was appointed manager in September, is an admirer, of, uh, admirer but Kante has been injured since. Look, it also it talks about us being linked to Jude Bellingham, etc, etc, etc. Uh, two great players in Jorginho and Kante that still got a lot to give 
provided both are fit. But maybe it's time to move on. I mean, certainly Kante costs so much money in wages. He costs so much money in wages for a guy that just doesn't play football. <laughs> he just doesn't. When he does play football, he's the best. He's the best at football when he plays football. But the man doesn't play football. So therefore, he's an expensive, pointless thing at the moment in terms of a business perspective. Maybe it's time for Declan Rice, Cesare Cassidy, Carney Chet will make, uh, you know, all those guys to come in. Yeah, what do you think? Comment down below. Let me know what you think of the midfield scenario. And let's move on and talk about Neymar. All right, all right, all right. Um, so Chelsea have made an approach for Neymar. <laughs> Um, after Lionel Messi's PSG transfer decision is confirmed. Chelsea are continuing to blend their new recruitment team with the summer's interim work of Todd Bowley and Badalic Bali. Those two have been the public figures in command of day-to-day -day business at the club since their takeover. And it's been busy. To say the least, <laughs> narrator, narrator says, uh, with transfer activity and club progression avenues being explored across the globe, literally a global project, it's, um, there is no knowing where the latest transfer or new director might come from. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we're short a few technical and recruitment directors, don't you? I think we get a little bit more. Be it young or old, Chelsea are showing extreme interest and openness in all aspects of the new regime's plan to function. Well, of course, a huge priority is building this under-25 team and, you know, the vision board of all the young talents and, you know, seemingly coming to pass. Like, if, you know, we got... It seems like we've got um, Fofana and Andre Santos over the line. It's uh, created uncertainty, but it's also excitement within the fan base because this is where we're getting our excitement at the moment because it's certainly not on the football pitch um, that are preparing to go back into the domestic action eighth in the table. Great. Thanks for that sobering uh, reminder. I should probably have said this is on football.london. I should have said that right, this article, because that's a rare slip up from me about not um, stating or citing where I'm getting this from. But I'm getting it from football.london. Um... Yes, so it's created uncertainty. Yes, we've read that. We're in eighth place. Yes, that's very sad. Having signed two players over 30 in the summer, but also three teenagers on top of multiple more youth arrivals um, for the academy setup. Although I don't believe a lot of these kids are going into the academy because they're probably a little bit too old. Maybe a little bit of development squad and then into the first team a la Cesare Cassidy from Inter. Uh, trying to work out the aims of the um, each moment may not be clear, especially in their latest dealings. David Datro Fafana, the aforementioned 19, he's actually 20 now. I mean, maybe he was 19, 19 when this was written. He's just turned 20. Uh, is expected to join in January to bolster um, attacking options. But also, yeah, he's part of the uh, the wider vision of 2030 ambitions. So yeah, Chelsea have got this like vision board of 2030, and they've got you know the senior players at that point would be your Mason Mounts, your Reese Jameses. Um, I guess they'll still be playing, but um, maybe your Declan Rice's. Uh, meanwhile, the 38-year-old uh, Thiago Silva is still on for a new deal at the end. Yeah, he's, he's, what? Thiago, chill out, man. When are you going to retire? Uh, and Golo Kante and Jorginho's contracts are both up. And, uh, yeah, it also talks about um, Andre Santos could follow David Datro for Fana. This is most evident that continued belief that signing Cristiano Ronaldo isn't completely off the table. Oh. Meanwhile, should the... I mean, it is because it is. Fabrizio Romano says it is. He says, look, Potter doesn't want him. He's not an option for Chelsea right now. And let's uh, all pray to the heavens that is, that is going to happen. Um, you know, meanwhile, should the chance to sign a new World Cup winner, Lionel Messi, come up... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we're not signing Lionel Messi. The Argentine isn't readily linked with the Blues, but it appears the chances of him playing at Stamford Bridge were most likely in 2014. Yeah, so I did a I did a video on this. Messi nearly joined Chelsea, Mourinho's Chelsea in 2014. I did a video back on it like a year ago or something. Go find it. Like type in like uh, the story of Messi and Chelsea into YouTube or something. That is a wild story. Um, it's like an edited video that I did so you know you might enjoy it um yes yeah, so a major bid went in back then now with the Paris Saint-Germain uh, contract up at the end of the season the World Cup uh, ball winner would go for free 
But it does look like he's extending now with um, with PSG. So uh, they have a verbal agreement agreement with uh, Messi, and it does seem like he will, he will continue for at least another year. This could open up room for one of Kylian Mbappe or Neymar to leave in 2023. Mbappe is an interesting one because he's not happy at PSG. He just re-signed, and, and then as soon as he's re-signed, apparently he's really pissed off. Um, French reporters are saying like um, Julian Laurent and stuff like that. People are saying that Mbappe isn't happy at PSG. Um, we'll see what happens. And Bowley could be uh, be working on a shock move in this department. Transfer expert Simon Phillips, our boy, writes that Bowley met with Neymar's representatives in Qatar excuse me, during the World Cup. It remains unknown who they are, who they are or what took place, but the American has once again shown his comfort in footballing circles and his ambition to be around the key players on the table. And you can't knock that. He's done that since the beginning, told Bowley. He immediately went to uh, George Mendes, the Portuguese super agent. He started ha- hosting dinners with all the Premier League CEOs. He's immediately rubbed shoulders with all the right people like you know movers and shakers he was there he wants to be involved Neymar has worked with Pini Zahavi before and Chelsea themselves have good relationships with the agent which could bolster their chances or something yeah wasn't he Willian's agent as well I believe he was Pini Zahavi I think so I think so look it's not part of the 2030 plans to sign these superstars that is like a different, wider scale, long-term plan. But maybe, maybe the ownership see, um, you know, the, the Romelu Lukaku didn't work. We never really replaced uh, Eden Hazard and uh, Diego Costa properly. Um, they probably see we've got good functional players, but we don't have that pizzazz. And Maybe that's why they want to get Joe Felix. Maybe that's why they met Neymar's officials to say, hey, what do you think about Chelsea, Neymar? Huh? Yeah, Chelsea, West London, you know, go and play in the Premier League, show me what you got. I don't know, it would be fun, wouldn't it? I mean, he's wicked, but we'll see. Let me know what you think. I want to get all your opinions and everything we've spoken about. Jao Felix, six points loan, an approach for someone like Neymar, everything in between, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up. It's been a long video, so thank you for liking and subscribing. I look forward to your feedback and your opinions down in the comments section. Um, happy Christmas. Take care. Look after your loved ones. And have a good time. Peace.